A Roman walks into a bar and says, I'll have five beers. Because <laughs> five is, this is Roman numeral five. And today we're going to talk about numerals. Now we are going to be going through, to start off this book by Stephen Pollard, a mathemat mathematical prelude to the philosophy of mathematics. And he makes the argument in the book that um, in order to uh, in order to hypothesize about math, you got to know what a mathematician is doing in the first place. You have to do math. It used to give me a little bit of grief thinking, wait, am I going to be teaching math to philosophers? Like, that's not right. I'm a philosopher, not a mathematician. I finally have gotten over it. I'm going to do some math in this on this channel. We just got to, you know, you got to do it. Now, I can't put everything from the book onto your screen. That would be copyright infringement. Uh, so please go buy the book. Um, it would really help me if you bought the book from the link below that I'll put in the description. So isn't it weird? There's the Roman numeral, which is just a wedge. And in the United States where I live, we use the Western Arabic numerals, right? The little corner with the, or I guess it would be backwards for you, the corner with the half circle, right? And they're two totally different things. And yet in a way they're the same. Really, they're just symbols that name the same thing. These aren't the only kinds of numerals either. I used to teach Spanish and I uh, taught about the Mayans. The Mayans had their own bizarre system of numerals where one would be a dot, two, two dots. You go all the way four dots and then five was just a line, right? That was the numeral five was just a, a baseline and then six would be you put a dot on top of that. So there are all different kinds of ways where you can name a number and we'll call that numeral. So a little bit of vocab and you should probably write this down just so you keep it straight in your head. A numeral, a numeral names a number. But notice the numeral isn't itself the number. It's very tempting to think the little corner in the half circle is what five is. But if that were the case, then the, the Roman numeral V would be naming that corner and half circle, but that's not what, the Romans didn't even know about that thing, but yet it seemed like they were talking about something, right? So it can't be the case that the numeral is the number. So what is the number? Well, it's very tempting to say that it's this right here, right? In fact, that's part of the joke, right? He says, I'll have five beers and you say, oh, but that's two, right? One, two, or this is five, one, two, three, four, five. And in fact, in the book, Pollard calls attention to the fact that kids tend to tell their age this way, right? I am these many years old. It seems like a natural thing to do, so it seems naturally that that's what the numerals are naming. But does the corner and half circle name these five fingers? Well, no, there are five fingers, but this isn't five itself. If it were, then my five toes couldn't be five, right? Because this is five right here and my toes aren't fingers. Instead, we're using our fingers to name that number as well. So we're using our fingers just like numeral. And yet there is a reason why it seems like a lot more tempting to say that this is five than the little corner and circle is five. The reason being this sign of five also is a collection of five, right? It exemplifies the number five. There are five things here and I'm using this to name the number five. In other words, this is doing double duty, right? It's naming a number and it's an example of the number but it's not the number itself. For our purposes, in the book, Pollard comes up with his own system of very intuitive numerals, which is just tally marks, right? For every number n, there are n tally marks. If you have the number one, one tally mark. Number three, one, two, three tally marks. And much like the fingers, the tally marks exemplify the number that you're talking about. So the number three is named by that one, two, three tally marks, so that's a numeral. And it's also an example of a collection of three things, but it's not the number three itself. Now we'll talk more about these tally mark numeral system in the next video. But what is it exactly then that these numerals are naming? What are these numbers? You know, if it's not a bunch of tallies or a bunch of fingers, what is it? In the book, all Pollard says is that a number is whatever the numeral names. Circular definition, right? Is he cheating here? Well, not really. Remember, one of our big questions in philosophy of math is, what are numbers? Now, we don't want to start off by assuming an answer to that question. So what Paul is really doing is just saying, like, whatever it is that that, you know, little corner and half circle has in common with the V, you know, whatever it is that those things are pointing at, the numbers, you know what I'm talking about? That's what a numeral points at. He's not trying to define what a number is. He's just telling you that Whatever that thing is, that's what numerals are pointing at. In other words, this whole thing is more about telling us what a numeral is and not what a number is. That comes later. So to review, the symbols that we use to name numbers, we'll call numerals. 
they are not the numbers themselves, even though they might exemplify the number. They might be examples of the number. They are not actually the numbers themselves.